All the great memories we've had at work. How many have had days like that? We all have. We've all experienced those days. I, I was sharing in the service prior to this one that I got this new job running a backhoe in Prescott, Arizona. And I hadn't worked there very long. And one of the jobs I went on to, I had to grade for them to pour concrete for a sidewalk and a patio underneath a porch. And so as I'm bringing this, you know, grade out, I'm not paying attention to the top of the backhoe, and the top of the backhoe, boom, pokes a hole through the porch roof. Brand new house. Nobody's ever moved there yet. Po pokes a hole through the roof. And then after they poke a hole through the roof, I get so upset, I hit the controls, and I go like this, and it swings the boom out and rips the roof off. So it was just a hole, then it became a whole catastrophe. But anyway, we have days like that. And we're going to talk about building relationships at work. At work. Because work, we spend a lot of time there. And this is something you have to build. This is something you have to do. We can complain about where we work. We, can, we will never find the right place to work as long as we have the wrong attitude. So we have to get an attitude that I'm going to enjoy my job, that I'm going to be happy on my job, that I'm not going to complain about my job. Now, that's easy to say, but I'm going to tell you, you spend a third of your life at work. And I want you to stop and think about the people you have heard say things like, you ask them, how's your day going? And they'll look at their watch and say, well, I'll let you know in three hours when I get off work. <laughs> and my thought about when somebody says that, you mean to tell me that you are miserable a third of your life? We should love what we do. We should love the job we do. We should love the work we do. If you quite haven't found that occupation, then you need to discover what it is and get in the right place. But regardless, if you have the perfect job, I guarantee you there is no perfect people working with you. And you will run into people in your workplace that irritate you, that try to hurt you, that lie about you, that do all, because that is just what humanity is. Humanity has that as a part of the way it is. 90,000 hours we're going to spend at work. So let's have 90,000 hours of laughter and fun. And Now, I want to back up a little bit about some of those videos. I want you to think about the guy with the paint. I, I don't know what happened there, but they got a truckload. It looks like yellow line marking paint, and this guy has got it inside his cab all over him. Then you got the guy at the car wash. And, you know, at first I thought, this guy is actually wanting to do this. It's like he is, but no, he's the guy, you know, when you first pull into the car wash that directs you and then he sprays the front of your hose, he gets that hose caught up in one of those twirling things. It sucks him in there and wraps him up. So we can all have those kind of days at work. And, Matter of fact, did you know this? 
It's a very interesting thing. There are people that all they do is study how to make the work environment better. And this is one of the guys, he's a psychologist, and by the name of Andrew Neighbor, and he says, it's safe to say your job can make a huge impact on your quality of life. Your job. And we must work hard at having the right mindset, the right mentality, the right attitude at work. And if we have the right attitude at work, life is going to get a lot better for us. He also said we spend a lot of time at work, and it really affects people's general happiness and also life outcomes. Your general happiness is determined by your mindset. Not my mindset, not your co-worker's mindset, not your boss's mindset, not the president, not the nation, not the, you know what I'm saying. It boils down to us having that right attitude. Now, we've all worked in a toxic work environment. Toxic. Where there's somebody there at work that is just toxic and they're ugly, they're angry, they're mad, they're unhappy people and their occupation is going around and they try to make everybody else miserable in life. But we got to decide we're not going to let those people determine our joy and our happiness. No, we're not going to let them rob us of our happiness. And so it is a decision that you and I must make that we're going to be happy at work. And until you make that decision, you will be like the Bible says, tossed to and fro by everything that comes your way. Every time something doesn't go your way, you're going to feel miserable, and nothing will ever be perfect. I really believe that work is meant to be a blessing, and that work can be a blessing, but if it's meant to be a blessing, then why, I ask the question, does it feel like a curse? Because work really is a curse or can be a curse. God invented work. He gave it to Adam and Eve. And he says, go in the garden and till the garden, take care, tend to the garden. And he gave them a job, but then they sinned. And when they sinned, we read in Genesis chapter 2 how that work became a curse at that point. Then God said it unto the man, I command you not to eat from the tree, but you listen to your wife and ate from it. Guys, this is where it says in the Bible, you shouldn't listen to your wife. No, ladies, I'm just kidding. Don't get upset. No rioting here. This was a joke. It's only meant in humor. A matter of fact, if you go on and read here, he says, but you listened to your wife and ate from it, so I will curse the ground because of you, not Eve, because of Adam. So anyway. The buck stops with us guys. And he goes on to say, you will have to work hard all your life for the food the ground produces. Then let's drop down to verse 19. It says, you will work hard for your food until your face is covered with sweat, especially here in Arizona in the summer. You will work hard until the day you die. You know something? Work is not easy. Work is hard. But work can be some of the best time of our lives. And it's all about our mindset. You know, you ever work with that just really sour person, that really foul person that just brings a lot of ne negativity to your work? Your mission as a Christian is to show them love, show them grace, show them mercy, and pray them out of there. <laughs> Eighty-five percent, that was just back up there, eighty-five percent, eighty-five percent, get a load of this, just wrap your head around this, eighty-five percent of people hate their job. Now that's globally, but in the United States, 70 percent or seven out of ten people hate their job. And a lot of times the reason we hate our job is simply because we've got the wrong frame of mind. And so we need to change that. We need to get a different frame of mind. So in the beginning, we know that God gave Adam work, and it was meant to be a blessing. And I believe even though because of Adam's sin and Eve's sin, that it became a curse that through Jesus Christ, 
coming into our hearts, changing us, we now can turn our work into a tremendous blessing. We can come to the place where we love to go to work, where we're not, we're not, it's, it's like, have you ever seen the person and he says, how your day going? And they says, man, I don't know. It's just, it seems like the day has flown by. And the reason is because they're enjoying what they do. And so we got to get that mindset that we're going to enjoy life. And it is a mindset. Now, I want to look at something here that researchers found that really is powerful. This is at the Nova Medical Center. And several things as they begin to discover about your attitude or individual's attitude concerning their job, concerning their work, it says several things. One thing they discovered is that the more positive you are, the less stress you live with in your life. Stress we know is a killer. We know it affects us. We know it makes us unhealthy. And so if you are constantly getting a negative diet from your work, you will be stressed out. They went on to say researchers have concluded that being optimistic can lead to an increased lifespan. Sometimes you just have to take a deep breath, let it out, and don't hang on to it. Are you with me? If we're optimistic, it says it, lowers the level of distress. We have a better psychological and physical well-being. We, in other words, we mentally, emotionally, and physically feel better about ourselves simply because we have chosen to be positive about work. It goes on to say better, gives us better coping skills during hardship and times of stress. Life has those bumps in it, does it not? Life for all of us, those who are watching online, those who are present, we've all had some bumps in life and we're going to have some more. That's just life. But if we've learned to cope with the stress and if we've learned to come to the place to just take a deep breath and relax and not get angry, not get mad, but rejoice in the Lord always. And God says, again, I say rejoice. When we take that to our work, it will literally help us navigate some of the difficult situations we're going to have in life. Another thing they found, friendliness in the workplace can make the atmosphere more positive. We are called as believers to be nice, to be kind, to be friendly, to show love, to be forgiving, to be merciful. Are you with me? And so just being friendly at the workplace. Now, I know there's some hard people, and I know there's some mean people, and I know some cantankerous people, but we just got to let that go, and we just got to keep being nice to those people and just being nice to them because that is what will make us feel satisfaction that we enjoy our job. Another thing they said, employees who have positive interactions with each other are also more likely to feel happy at work, thus leading to outstanding productivity. Everybody does something right. Everybody does something right. And if you will, with your coworkers and with your boss and with your company, focus on what they are doing right or what they do do good and tell them about those kind of things, you will be amazed how that will change your work environment to a place that you're more productive and you're happier simply there. Now let's back up to Genesis chapter 2 where God first made work. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work and take care of it. So this is the first place we read that word work in the Bible. Now, it is throughout the Bible, but what is interesting about this word work here in the Bible is that it literally means not only to work, but it also means to serve and to worship. So the Hebrew word here, Avoda literally means to work, to worship, or service. So, like, for instance, when we read Joshua 25, 15, in English it's transferred, uh, translated serve, but it literally is that same word. It says, Joshua 24, 15 says, But as for me and my household, we will serve Avada, the Lord, 
or we will work and my work will be service unto God and it will be a form of worship unto God. Avada is a picture of integrated faith. It's a picture that where my life and work come to a place of worship unto God. We, we all know this scripture. And in um, Colossians it says, whatever you do, work is un- with all your heart, working unto the Lord and not unto human masters. So we gotta get this mindset as Christians, as believers in Christ, our job, whatever it is, whatever your work is, and we all have work, it could be school, we could be taking care of your home, taking care of children, it could be working a particular job. We all have work every day. We need to do this as a form of worship unto God, and in doing so, we honor God. Amen. And it goes on to say, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Again, we have that word work. When I work, I'm serving God and I'm worshiping God. And so I need to have this attitude that it's not their work, it's something I'm doing to glorify God. The other day I was sitting in this place and I just ordered myself some food and I sat down at this table there and I noticed somebody had missed the garbage can and they had some trash on the floor. I looked at it and I thought, hmm, they missed the garbage can. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, go pick it up and put it in the garbage. Now, it wasn't my garbage. It wasn't my mess. But it was an attitude that I decided that, you know what? I'm going to do something about this. Because it's as unto the Lord. Now, how many have ever heard of a slack hand? What's a slack hand? A slack hand is that guy who doesn't really help our girl. Now, the other day... My grandkids were moving into an apartment on the third floor. Now, I want to caution you. Don't take the third floor unless you have no other option. Because you've got to carry furniture up, and you've got to carry furniture down. And so we're carrying this heavy furniture up there, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. Go up the stairs and around the corner and so forth and so on. So... A slack hand is kind of like, here's a bunch of guys moving a really heavy couch or a dining room table, and they're taking it up to the floor, and they're all going. And one guy, he's grunting and and acting like he's working, but he's actually a slack hand. He's not lifting anything. That's what the Bible's referring to as a slack hand. So whenever we have a slack hand at work, anybody work with a slack hand? Somebody you work with who really doesn't pull their weight, who really doesn't do their work, who, you know, so forth and so on. Don't dwell on that. Dwell upon the opportunity that I have to step in there and pick up the slack. God wants you and I to pick up the slack. Galatians 6, 2 says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. That word law is literally talking about the scriptures. I will fulfill the scriptures when I step in and help other people with their burdens. If I'll at work have this attitude, well, it's not necessarily your work or my work, but I'm here, I'm blessed to have this job, I'm not doing anything right now, so I'm gonna just go over here and help this person out. You'll be surprised how that will create friendship and help people to begin to like you and change your whole work atmosphere. You know, Moses prayed to God, and and we read about this prayer in Psalms 90. This is a prayer that Moses is praying to the Father. He's praying to God, and in this particular prayer, he's praying about work. So this whole chapter is about work, and I want to read verse 17, and then we'll back up and read, begin at verse 10. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands Upon us, yes, establish the work of our hands. In other words, God's favor is something we need to pray for and realize that whatever we're doing, that we are partnering with God and we are worshiping God and we're serving God and he's going to favor us and he's going to bless us and he's going to help us, amen? We need to learn to be happy at work. I was telling you about a guy who goes to our church here. He's a crane operator and Marcus Jones, he plays the bass up here on the guitar. and He was 
Yeah, he does a good job, doesn't he? Don't we have a great worship team? Awesome worship team. And, uh, but anyway, he's at work, and he's running a crane at the Palo Verde nuclear power plant. This is the largest nuclear power plant in the entire world. Is right here. And he's working there. He's running a crane there. And he's working with some bunch of employees that are just grumblers and gripers and unhappy people and stuff. And they go to the boss and they tell the boss that they think Marcus is using drugs at work. They said, because he's always happy. I'm serious. I am not making this up. This is what they did. So out of the blue, Marcus is running the crane there, and, and they come and get him and say, hey, come with us right now. We're testing you for drugs because nobody can be this happy all the time. So they, he says, well, I'll tell you right now, the only drug I got in my system is Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm so happy. So they test him, and of course, he didn't have any drugs in him, and they really liked him, and he's always happy, so they gave him a big promotion over that whole thing. Got more money, got paid more money, got a better position, got a better job. You know, he used to work inside the, the place there where it's super hot, and he'd have to wear one of those, you know, uh, hazard suits, you know, all that kind of stuff, and he would run a crane that lift the nuclear rods out of the thing, and, and, and it was just a very hot and very dangerous job, and he got promoted outside where it's nice and cool, and he doesn't have to deal with all that kind of stuff. But let's back up here and look at Psalms 19. Let's look at Moses' prayer a little bit more, because it, it reflects a couple of things here. And one thing I want to see is right in verse 10, it says, the days of our lives are 70 years. Now, whether we like it or not, we can only work for so long. He goes on to say, and if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. But somewhere between 70 and 80, we come to the place physically and mentally and emotionally where it becomes very difficult to work a job. That's, hence, we retire. Are you with me? And so it's saying here, yet their boast is, only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. We know the power of your anger is talking about God, for as the fear of you and your wrath. So teach us to number our days. We need to learn to number our days. We don't know how long we have on this earth. None of us know. But why waste our days on this earth that God has blessed us with being unhappy, being miserable, complaining, just not enjoying this time of work on our life. It's a third of our life. Let's choose to be happy, amen? I don't care what the rest of the people are doing at work or what their attitude is. Let's just be happy. Let's be helpful. Let's be kind. Let's do all these kind of things. And it says that we may gain a heart of wisdom with this kind of attitude. Then it goes on to say that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Your attitude at work will determine whether you're happy or not. Make us glad according to your days in which you have uh, afflicted us. Verse 17, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. We need to pray as we're driving to work and we're heading to work and we're going to work or we're beginning our day. We just need to say, God, bless me today. Favor me today. God, help me to be a testimony of your love and your grace. It amazes me. People sometimes, and not everybody, but there are people that will talk about Jesus and talk about getting saved, but they're lazy. Hello. They're just lazy. They're slack hands. They're not really doing their work. And you know what? Your testimony has le very little credibility. But if you're one of those person, people who's always kind and you're always helpful and you're always encouraging people and you're always saying a positive word, when you talk about the Lord, people listen. They listen. And you have a much bigger impact. I want to read you something here that uh, David McKay said. And I, I really, really believe it's profound. Let us realize that the privilege to work is a gift. It is a gift. The power to work is a blessing. 
Because there's a lot of people that wish they could have your job, that wish they, they could have a place to work, but they don't. And I'm going to tell you something. We're very, very fortunate to live in the United States of America. I've had the privilege of traveling all over the world. I've had the privilege of living many years in a third world country, and I've seen the poverty, I've seen the suffering, I've seen people that are so desperate for a job, they just wish they would have something to do. But we're blessed here in the United States of America, and we need to understand that. But the last thing it says here, the love of work is success. Now, when you look at somebody's beautiful home or you look at somebody's beautiful truck, I mean, guys, I want you to stop and think about that, you know, three-quarter ton Silverado Chevy or Ford um, King Ranch or whatever the case, whatever you want, four-wheel drive, big diesel engine, you know, gets six miles to the gallon and, uh, you know, it's... <laughs> Big, but, but you don't care because you, you are blessed. You've got plenty of money. You can afford the, the diesel and all that kind of stuff. You know what? You can be one of those people too. And it begins, though, with your attitude about your job, your attitude about your work. So many bosses want to promote people and they want to raise people up, but they can't find people that are really worth doing that because they have a bad attitude about their job. See, success is so linked in life the kind of home you're going to live in, the kind of vacations you can take, the kind of vehicle you drive, the kind of clothes you wear are so often not linked to your particular job, but linked to your attitude at that job. Your promotion, getting that advancement, getting that training and, and raising you up is all dependent upon your attitude. The other day, my grandson Joseph he got a job, a new job, and it's a brand new job, and, and uh, so he makes a little bit more money there, and, and uh, I think um, he makes about $17 an hour. That's his starting pay. And so he's excited about this. You know, he's a young guy. He's, he's, he's just 20 years old. He's very young. He's a young man. He's, he's, he's beginning to grow and things like this, and he's, he's learning a career. And so he's just got a good attitude about this job. He's so happy about this job. He's so excited about this job. And it's a big company, and they have their own cafeteria and all that. And he was in the cafeteria getting lunch, and there was a guy right behind him getting lunch. And he just turns to the guy and says, do you mind if I sat with you? And he just sat down with the guy and has a good attitude. He says, oh, I love my job. I'm so glad to be working here, on and on and on. And then he turns to the guy and says, oh, tell me about your job. What do you do here? And then the guy says, well, my job is a very important job. He says, I'm the vice president of the company. <laughs> Woo! Now you're talking. And he says, I really like your attitude. He says, matter of fact, after lunch, come on up into my office, and I'll show you my office. He takes him up to his office, begins to talk to him, says, you know what? We need some, send some people to J Japan for additional training. Would you be interested in going to Japan for some training? I mean, you're talking a young 19-year-old, 20-year-old guy getting paid to go to Japan. I'm all in. I don't know about you. But it's all because of his attitude. And his success is directly linked to his attitude at work, and so is yours, and so is mine. Happiness at work is a choice. It's your choice. You either choose to be happy or you choose to be miserable. So let's choose to be happy. We have nothing to lose. Let's choose to be happy. Let's let God favor us. Let's have a good time at work. Let's laugh. Let's enjoy the time we have to spend there. Amen. So the next time somebody asks you, how's your day going, you need to respond, man, I am having a great day. I get to work today. I get to be here. I'm getting paid. I'm making money. I'm, go I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You need to just be positive because you never know when you're talking to the vice president. That's true. Have you ever seen that show? What is it? The boss, the hidden boss. What is it called? Undercover, Undercover boss. Undercover boss. You never know when the boss is watching you. Many years ago, this was 1977. 
Tammy and I just got married. We were newly married, and there was no work. There were no jobs. It was a very difficult time in our lives. I needed work. I could not find work anywhere. Lived in Chino Valley, which is about 17 miles north of Prescott. And I found a job. They were hiring people at Ash Fork. Now, Ash Fork is in the middle of nowhere on Interstate 40. And so, anyway, they were hiring some people up there, and I found out the guy who owned it lived in Chino Valley, where I'm living. He was willing to give me a ride to and from work, even though gas back then was 36 cents a gallon. I didn't have much money. And so I started riding back and forth with him, and I always talked about how I liked working there and everything. And then one day, we had a job, and, and one of our jobs was is that the semi-trucks would come in and take a load of flagstone. Now, this stuff is heavy, weighs hundreds of pounds. And you would have to rock it like this and back and forth and kind of, they call it walking the stone, off the dock, onto the trailer. And I'm not going to step there because then I'll be on that video. And anyway, so I was walking this flagstone and I was just going for it. I was having a good time. I took it, loading the truck, and all of a sudden, I didn't know this, but the boss is watching from around the corner. After we loaded that truck, he says, Joe, come to the office. And I thought, well, I wonder what he wants. And so I go to the office. And he says, I was noticing you were loading three flagstones to every other employee's one. In other words, you were doing three times the work. You know, today it's not hard to do three times the work of other employees. It really isn't hard because a lot of people just don't work hard. And he says, because of that, I want to give you a raise. I want to give you a promotion. And I got promotion after promotion after promotion after promotion. And before I knew it, there were two companies of stone companies competing for me, and I doubled my income in just a matter of three months. All because of my attitude about work. And so can you. Your boss is watching. But more importantly, God is watching. And God wants to partner with you. He wants to favor you. He wants you to enjoy your job. Would you bow your heads with me? As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, would be an attitude of prayer. I want to challenge you. If you're here today, maybe you're watching online. I want you to stop and think for a minute. Are you walking with God? Do you know God? Are you serving God? Have you made that commitment to Christ? I had a guy come up to me after the last service. He says, Pastor Joe, I finally found Jesus Christ. I finally accepted Christ into my life. And I said, you did? And his wife comes up, yeah. I tried to tell him about the Lord. I tried to explain about God, but he never quite got it. He would come to church, but one day he said, I was just laying in bed. I was thinking about God. I was looking up at the ceiling of my roof. He says, and all of a sudden it came, and all of a sudden I understood it. And all of a sudden I invited Christ into my heart, and I accepted him. He says, I've never been so happy ever since that moment. So if you're here today, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about joining a church. I'm talking about where you accept God into your heart. So he can change your heart. He can change your attitude and your perspective in life and the way you view things right now. So as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, if you don't know the Lord, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to encourage you to do that today. And you can do that right now by raising your hand. Raise it up to God and say, God, I want to receive Christ. Yes, I see that hand and that hand and that hand and that hand and that hand, that hand and that hand, that hand there and there and there. I see that hand and that hand and that hand. Over here, I see those hands. Hands are going up everywhere. If you're watching online, I want you to raise your hand up right where you're at. If God's speaking to you, because God will see your hand, you can put them down. God sees you. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and I just ask you to pray this prayer with me. And... Let's pray it together. Say these words. Say, Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ to come into my life and become my God, my Lord. And from this day forward, I ask for your forgiveness for the mistakes I've made with my life, the sins I've committed, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Change my perspective about life, 
about work, that I might have the same mind that is in Christ Jesus in me. Holy Spirit, change my life and fill me with your presence. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now give the Lord a clap offering. Let's thank God for that. Praise God.